Anime. Anime. I watch it, you watch it, maybe. And I've been watching anime for a, a long, long time. Uh, probably since high school. When I was a wee little, wee little baby boy. That, uh, like, just, I don't know, Josh put something. Poor little boy there. And I thought, I've never, I've never, uh, fuck me. And even though I have a my anime list, I've never properly rated them. Like, I've given them scores, but t taste change. Like, I'm pretty sure I had Black Lagoon at a 10. So. So for today, I go off the cuff, no script, nothing. God fucking help me. And I thought I'd first go through my my anime list just to show you what I've watched. And then I've taken screenshots of them all. We're going to put them into a tier list and then we're going to definitely rate all the anime I've watched. Given though it's been like, what, three years? I've only watched like 70 shows. So like, it's not a lot, actually. <laughs> As always, if you like this fucking chaotic mess this is going to be, then, you know, like and subscribe. Uh, I haven't uploaded anything in ages, so I don't know if there'll actually be a proper schedule. But I do stream sometimes, and I'll put that... No. Like, 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 fuck me, I'm struggling. Like, here, I'm going to try and get back into streaming as well, doing more stuff like this, because, I don't know, playing games on stream kind of sucks. So without further ado... Let's rate my anime. Well, it's not my anime, it's more like my tail. Let's rate my- So, here's all the here's all the shows that I've watched. We're actually gonna filter these, I think. Boom! So, I've only ever given, I think, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've given only seven tens, ever. Now, I don't know if these tastes still match up to how I am. We're only going to go through this a bit quickly because I'll describe more in detail about the shows that I've watched on the tier list. Neon Genesis Evangelion at, at the top, number one spot. God, I must be fucking depressed. <laughs> Neon Genesis is such a fucking good show. Like, I can't even, like, God, I said I was going to hold myself off with the tier list. But there's something about Neon Genesis Evangelion where it just throws you for a fucking loop and it just makes you think oh it's gonna be a fun robot show and then 10 minutes later you're just <laughs> so yeah it's an amazing it's an amazing fucking show god wow that really hurt my knees uh going further down we got steins gate that might move i'm not too sure i think violet evergarden may have mo may move as well cowboy bebop starting on nines and then obviously going down and down beginning got eight we got fully coolie and then our first seven, there's a lot of eights, a lot of eights, our first seven. I, it's the thing I've done. So, no, I'll explain that when we get to the sales after Josh, don't worry. So our first seven is Death Note, and then going down our first six is Mirai Nikki, and our only five is, is well, it's fucking, of course it is. So, this is just a quick go through of my anime tier list on on my anime list and i'll see you guys at the tier list right now so here we are here is the tier list i've made we're going for some basic tiers we're just going for basic s a b c d and f now when i said pizza i fucking love pizza now when I say S, I don't mean perfect. Like, I cannot fucking see. I'm sorry, I cannot fucking see. When I say S, I don't mean perfect. I mean near perfect. A show which has gripped me so much. There may be slight complications throughout its runtime. I deem it like a 9.5 out of 10, like a 9.9, .9, where it's like, it's not perfect. Changed my whole idea on the idea that, you know, tens don't exist, but near perfect shows do. So that's S. A to B is kind of like eight and seven, C, D, 6, 5, F is like 2 or 1. Like, like 4 to 1 is F, in my opinion. Here are all the shows that we have. Fuck me. <laughs> even though it's the, even though it's not like the biggest amount anyone has ever watched of any anime ever, it's still so much to go through. I'm not going to go like 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to spin around, eyes closed, grab one, talk about it, place it in the list. That's what we're going to do, I believe. Uh, if you do want to find this, I've published it. It's just called The Lord of Meets Anime Tier List. Uh, I'll share it on Twitter anyway, after I'm done um, with making this part of the video. So, that all should be good. And, well, no time like the present. No time like the present, they say. Okay, eyes closed. Let's go. We have grabbed Evangelion 3.0, you cannot redo. Ooh. 3.0 is the weakest of the rebuild films, in my opinion. I generally believe it's the weakest. 
um, a lot of people complain about um, not being able to understand the plot, which I get completely. It is suddenly from two point from two point oh, you are just you're just thrown in, and it's just like, what the fuck is going on? Why is he there? Who? What the fuck happened to fucking everyone ever made in this universe? <laughs> it's like, where's Asuka? Where the fuck is where the fuck is Gendo? What what happened to Nerve? Where the fuck is Villa? I can't say it's not enjoyable. It's such a the action scene at the end fucking phenomenal so so good but i can't put it any higher than a b because it's just it's just for first time viewers of the like the rebuild series you will be utterly fucking confused it will be a fun confusing ride i guess but you'll just be fucking confused to shit i actually i need to um i need to search up the name of the fucking character hold on <laughs> ava 3.0 i'm a fake fan i'm a fake fan Kawaru. Kawaru. I was about to say, Kawaru and Shinji's like moments on the piano and then their friendship together when friendship that is so fun to watch. And Kawaru is such an interesting, like mysterious character. And right in the, in the end, um, mild spoiler territory, by the way, in the end, well, well, no, spoiler territory, actually. Spoiler, put it up. Spoiler. Warning. Warning. Spoiler. In the end. Near the end, when it, when Shinji is pulling the spears out, and you just see Kawaru's like whole expression there, of like, oh, if Kawaru is acting like that, you're fucked up. You're fucked. This film does so well at expanding upon Kawaru's character, unlike how I feel they did in the original series and the end of Ava. So it gets a B. Just because the plot's a bit confusing. I might move it up near the end. We'll do a reshuffle near the end. But the plot's a bit confusing, but it's still a damn good entry into the whole Ava franchise. It's so good. Okay, next is... Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, this might be a weird take. I'm gonna put it high B. It's above, it's above 3.0. I'm gonna put it high B. Um, first of all, Mappa. Jesus fucking Christ, did not have to go that hard. Jujutsu Kaisen is a weird one for me because, first of all, the animation, fucking impeccable. The Some of the best animation I've seen in the media ever. Mappa fucking killed it. But I don't know why it didn't grip me. Um, I remember some of the characters' names. I remember, is it Sukuna? Sukuna and Gojo. Uh, there was a cool fucking panda in it as well. But I literally don't remember. <laughs> like most of the characters names <laughs> oh my god i'm such a bad fucking anime fan but like watching the main character i'm gonna have to search it up again god fucking almighty yuji um itadori yuji itadori like the main guy watching his like build up from eating the first sakuna finger to like to like how he was near the end impeccable and i like as well i tell you what no no i am gonna put it to a because i like how they didn't sideline side characters a lot of shows like the sideline side characters to focus on the main guy, the big guy, like the big plot point. You know, oh, it's it's Yuji looking and go, but the, the side characters got so much love, especially in the uh, like this the the uh, the arc in the forest where it's like all of the um, characters from different years, like um, Hammer Girl, Hammer Hammer Bro, fucking Super Mario Girl. Uh, her fight against like the witch character was so so good. Like, one of the most, like, captivating fights for me as well. And it's just the villains are done so well. And the guy, oh my god, the guy, the fucking guy, the, the business guy has, like, zero fucking emotion. Put the, put his name up on the screen, Josh. Put his name up on the screen. God, his fight where he's like, oh, I've gone over time. Guess I'm going to have to pull out all the fucking stuff. And he undoes his time. <laughs> Bro, holy shit. Okay, right. I'm going to hype about it. No, I need to rewatch it. I do need to rewatch it to gain a better opinion before season two. For well, the film, even though Jujutsu Kaisen is zero, I believe. Um, but it's a tier. It's it's good shonen. It's great shonen. It's uh, I don't know why it didn't captivate me as much. Maybe if I rewatch it, it, it will get me more. I'll be hooked in. But it's great shonen. Just a tier. Okay, next one. Fuck me. There's so many. <laughs> next one. Steins Gate. Steins Gate. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, drum roll. Drum roll, please, Josh. Drum roll. We have our first S. 
we have our first S tier. We have our first S for Steinsgate. Now, Steinsgate was like one of the first like near perfect shows I like rated. Like it was 10 out of 10 on my on my anime list for a reason. But like first few episodes, I understand. That's why I say near perfect, because it takes a moment to get into it. As you're watching the characters, they're building the time machine, they're hacking into CERN. Okabe's trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Maori's standing there going to the fucking room. And you're you kind of just a bit confused a little bit. But when... No spoilers, by the way, for those who haven't watched it. But those who have watched it, look at me. Those who have watched it. That episode. That, you know which one I'm talking about? No. When that episode hit... I tell you, I was fucking bawling, and I binged the rest of the series that night. I was going to go to sleep when I watched that episode, and then I just started fucking bawling my eyes out, and I was like, I need to, I need to fucking finish this. And it is the most heart-crushing fucking series, but it ends perfectly. The loop, the loop it goes around to pick right up from when it started, phenomenal, phenomenal. The characters, phenomenal. Kurusu, phenomenal. Okabe, phenomenal. Daru, <laughs> but I love the relationship between Kurusu and Okabe. I love that they get to, um, mild spoilers, they get to um, tighten up that romantic part before near the end. Um, I like Okabe's quest to save his best friend. I just think it's such a noble, he's such a noble character. He just wants to help and save his best friend. And it's just heart-wrenching drama that's so good. And it does the time travel concept so fucking well. And it's comedic as well. It's funny. It balances all of these emotions and serves you on the plate. And it's the best fucking meal you will eat in a long time. All right. Next one. Close eyes. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Okay. Okay. Miss Kobayashi's Drag Maid is low A. Is is like just like high B low A for me. Because it's one of the first slice of first of all, pros, so many. It's one of the first slice of life shows I fucking loved. I enjoyed it start to finish. It was fun. It was energetic. Fucking god, KyoAni did not have to fucking go off the way they did in some of those scenes. Like just put the right, just play the scene now. Josh, put the put this put this scene up as I'm talking. What the fuck? They did not have to go this hard, and yet they went this hard. It was impeccably done. And it throws you so off guard. But then it just goes right back into this like cushy little slice of life show. It's it's amazing. Kobayashi is just like a it's just like a nice surrogate for you to put yourself into, you know, a nice not plain. I wouldn't hmm. I suppose I would say plain. I would say plain. Maybe that's a bit of a down point for me. Like, Kobayashi is a very plain character compared to the rest of the cast, which I suppose is a good thing. But even so, shut up, phone. God. Oh, no. But even still, it feels just a little bit weird that you're compared to like Kana and Toru and everything. It, it just feels a little bit off. Uh, it's in, but also in a in a positive, it's a nice balance between serious and com and comedy. Where it's like serious and goofy, and it's it's a nice balance as well. Also, just put some stills up from the show. This show is fucking comfy. This show will make you feel at peace. The show is like perfect for making you feel like I'm sad. I don't want to be sad. Just put this fucking show on. It's good. The positives so way out outweigh the negatives. Is it S tier? No. Is it even high A? I don't think so. And there's a lot more shows on here which will go above that. But it's, it's Dragon Maid, and I still haven't watched season 2, and I'm kicking myself for it. I still haven't started it, and I'm going to soon, because, God, I just fucking need Dragon Maid in my life. <laughs> okay, so we've got, f God, four down, only four, and like, let's go. A silent voice. Kawina Capture, I believe it's called. God, I butchered that. I'm not putting that in. <laughs> Now it's weird because I rated this on my anime list like an 8 out of 10 and I think it's much more than that. I think it's an A. Th this film is an A but it's not, it's like middle ground A. This film will make you feel emotions that you thought were dead like eight, like years ago. <laughs> this film is, no, I thought, no, this film's high A because you, you'll see why I'm putting it high A soon. This film broke me, as I will say for many of these films coming up. This film 
broke me. Like, the whole story starting off with this bully who then develops this social anxiety and then confines within trying to apologize to the person that they bullied, who, who is deaf, is a deaf, is a deaf character, it's, you know, a, a silent voice. And then just the absolute emotional fucking rigmarole to the end of that film. At the end of that film, I was fucking bawling my eyes out. It was the characters, perfect. The plot, perfect. The scenery, gorgeous. It is, th this film is nothing short of a great romance drama. Silent Voice, if you haven't seen it and you want to cry, but also just feel joy, like an immense sea of healing, a joy inside, go watch it. It's so fucking good. I need to get it on Blu-ray. I haven't got it yet. Just go get it. Go get it and watch it. I'd, I'd, fuck it, I'd even say buy it. Fucking buy it <laughs> and just go watch it. It's so fucking good. Right, next one. Speed from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, the the remake of 2003's Full Metal Alchemist. I can't put this anywhere below an A. A, a for Alchemist. I, <laughs> fuck me. Can't put this anywhere below an A. But it's not high A. It's like here. It's like here. Full Metal Alchemist would be in S tier, but it only is because I haven't watched it recently. There are a lot of these anime like down here that I can remember, but there are some plot points in Full Metal Alchemist that I cannot remember. I remember Greed's character. I remember Edward Elric, obviously, and his brother. I remember, um, is it is it Wenry? Weary? When? Gosh, put open the screen who I'm talking about. Thank you. I remember like a lot of these plot points and going through. There's an um, Winry, Winry, fucking Winry, God Almighty. There's a great scene with Winry, God, like the si Winry with a gun about to shoot someone, and then uh, Edward comes down. And it's like you're not, no, these hands are meant for fixing. You can't do that. This, this isn't you. And I was just sat there like bursting into tears, like, oh, oh it's so good. <laughs> This show barely has any flaws. The pacing, immaculate. So good. I never felt bored for a single episode. But I just can't put it in S because if I properly remembered the ending, I'd put it in S. But I don't. And maybe for some people that's like a why you're not putting it in S. I tell you what. Right, it's a high A then. It's a high A because, in fact, no, yeah, it is literally high A. I don't know what I'm, I'm on some sort of drug to think that it's not high A, actually. High A for Alchemist, because it, it's, it is, it is the pinnacle of Shonen, it's so good. But I just don't remember the ending. Oh. Yeah! I gotta go get shopping. He's back, gamers. He's back and raring to go. Right, next, okay. Here we are. Danganronpa the animation is D for Danganronpa. Now the Danganronpa video games are a favourite of mine, you can't see it, but I actually have a Danganronpa V3 poster. Now, in saying this, I despise Danganronpa a lot. I like the games because I find them just so unbelievably funny. Like they're just so bad that they're good. But the anime, the Danganronpa animation doesn't carry that feeling because with, with the games you're playing it, you're voicing the characters, you're, you're goofing around. I did play a bit on stream if uh, Josh, if you'd like to put, you know, a little bit of that. I'm Mart Simpson! <laughs> a lot of fun, and it's, it's, it's a fun game to play, but it's not a fun anime to watch. It drags, the characters are basic and boring. You have like the smart guy who's sarcastic and then the guy who hates being late and you need to not be late. And then the fat hentai boy. <laughs> it's in D. There is barely anything redeeming about it. Barely anything redeeming about this. I can't put it in F because of my enjoyment of the games carries over too much. It's going in C. It's low C. It's low C for this reason alone. Um, how they wrapped it up before Danganronpa V3. Um, so they did Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair. Before Danganronpa V3, they did like an anime series based on the characters in Danganronpa 2. And then they did like about the Future Foundation. And it was a bit boring, but it wrapped up a lot of things very nicely. And uh, it gave a little bit of insight to how some character stories ended. Okay. Dine's Gate Zero is a low B, which is so so depressing to say i have 
Hold on, gamers. Hold on. I'm quite of a gamer. I'm, you know, I'm somewhat of a gamer myself. I have the Steins Gate Zero visual novel. Let me put that up for the camera for you. And the visual novel is fucking incredible. So I don't know where the fuck they went wrong. They do a few things right. They do the whole traumatic feeling, like the PTSD of, of Oak Bay. Because obviously this is uh, for the Steins Gate fans to know this, but if you don't, there are two timelines in Steins Gate. They do the PTSD of Oak Bay's like, trauma for everything. Perfect. I feel like they do it really well. They do it better in the visual novel. I think that's the problem as well. They do everything so much better in the visual novel. If you really like Steins Gate that much, just play the visual novel. It's so good. They do things okay, like the introduction of Maho as the character, I don't know, felt a little bit weaker than it did in the visual novel. They carry over a lot of good stories and plot points. It felt more like a slice of life. There was a lot, there felt a lot more tense in the visual novel than it did in the anime. And I believe it is down to the whole thing of you're watching it. And I just didn't enjoy it for some reason. Uh, I can't even pinpoint many things. There was a real, there was an okay end. There was an okay part with Okabe like doing a nice cool speech, becoming like a uh, mad scientist. It's so cool, it's so son cool. of a bitch. Again, like on on the roof. But the animation was choppy at best in a lot of parts. I can't put it anything above a B because not only that, but my disappointment was immeasurable and my day was ruined. So it gets a B from me. Uh, I might make a video one day just talking about the differences. I'd have to play the visual novel again, and it was such a, like, it was a long time. Okay, next. Kill a kill. Kill a kill. Kill a kill is top B. Kill a kill is top B because it's, it's not best trigger, but trigger is still in their prime when making this. The animation in this is impeccable. I would love to show some clips from the show but as fans of kill a kill no i don't think i could get away with doing that but the like first of all some of the memes that this like like showed were just <laughs> impeccable and just the characters were fun the idea was fun it is extremely very weirdly raunchy for some reason but for some reason it's the character of the show I can't put anything above a B, I feel though. Maybe low A. In fact, I'm yeah, I'm gonna move it to low A just for the animation alone, which was just fucking fantastic. I was on the edge of my seat watching this just all the time. Because it is so fast paced, it is so brutal, and it's just fantastic. It is like if you took the idea of a dreadlin shot and and shoved it in a Blu-ray disc, it would make this. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I can say, really. I mean, uh, I, I think I like Mako as a character. I believe I remember. I mean, please put it on screen if I like forgot the name. But when 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 she gets like this amazing like ability that like, most of the like cool students get, and like she becomes like this boxer, it is some of the most funniest shit. It's so good, and she's a great comic relief character as well. But overall, it's like really good, and I do I recommend if you haven't watched Trigger. I recommend, um, well, firstly, I recommend another show that we'll get onto soon. Uh, all my old drill fans, do you like drills? This is like my second pick, where it's like, if you're getting into, if you're getting into Trigger, watch this. It's short, it's sweet, and it's just damn right fun. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Haruhi Suzumiya is a strange one. It's middle B. Haruhi Suzumiya, I watched Haruhi Suzumiya at a very weird time in my weeb life where I was just getting back into watching anime. I had just come out of high school. I wasn't watching too much. I was reading Attack on Titan, um, but I wasn't watching much anime. So I bought Crunchyroll, and this is one of the first ones I got recommended to me. And I found it so strange because there is a watch order. For those who don't know, there is a watch order. Uh, I'll put I'll put on it. I'll put like um, what I mean on screen. Um, so there was a watch order, because in Haruhi Suzumiya, season 2, I believe, there is something called the Endless Eight, and... Why are we still here? I didn't know this. The Endless Eight is eight episodes which are the same apart from a few differences as the characters slowly realize they're in a time loop, for those who don't know. But it's literally, like, for the first maybe, like, five, it is just, like, subtle differences, and you're just like, I'm watching the same fucking episode over and over again. I'm getting nothing out of it. I'm going insane. But when you push through that, even when you push like before all of that and after that, the music scene, the music scene where where she performs with um 
with what I can only describe as the uh, human epitome of brain empty, no thoughts. It's so fucking good. The animation is fucking perfect. The song bops. I think it's called like God Only Knows or something like that. It's so good. But as you can tell by the way I'm talking, I still don't remember much from it. But it was a fun experience. And after ending it, I was kind of disappointed in the fact of, great, now nah, I don't really want to watch anything else because this was such a strange experience that, well, I, I just, I don't know how to feel anymore about anything else. But I put it mid B because... I feel like that's just where it belongs. It's it's a it's a good show. It's a good starter show. It has an amazing opening. A funny a lot of, like one of the most popular dances that literally nearly everyone's done on the planet. And I just think it's downright fun. I just think it's downright fun and enjoyable. All right, let's go. Let's go, boys. Black Lagoon. Black Lagoon. Now, unlike most people, I feel I actually have the Black Lagoon manga um, because I couldn't find a place to get the Blu-ray. But this is not me saying that it's not good because it is high B. I, Black Lagoon is high B. I didn't think anime could be this high action, just like run and gun pirate life of just someone screaming shit. Characters are great. Rock is a good surrogate to put yourself into, but also has a lot of character development in himself as he's starting to, you know, become a pirate you start to become a modern day pirate and then you have revy of course everyone's favorite like just badass heroin character but when he joins well, when he joins when he joins the crew and everything it's like from that point onwards it's just so high octane when they crash the boat into the fucking helicopter what it's so good but it's it's held back i feel by the idea that like it's very focused on action and not a lot on story there's still bits that we don't know about characters. There's still things I don't know about Revy, which I'd like to, which I suppose it is in her character to be very much a lot behind the wall. But it very much puts me off her character when I don't know more about why she got the way she did. It also, it was nice to see the Rox and Revy's relationship grow, of course, but I also feel like there's a weird disconnect between the idea of what's happening there. Because that's obviously a weird friendship, but is it a friendship? Is it a relationship? It's never in instinctively stated, but it's never not stated either. It's just fun. It's like, it's... Black Lagoon. It, 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 it's fun. There you go. B. B for, B for Black Lagoon. <laughs> If season two carried on the thriller-like epic of season one, maybe it would be higher than a D tier. Gore, love, and lust-filled, Devil Man Crybaby will question your faith in humanity. A tier. So, Welcome to the NHK is a very, very good show about how anxiety and whole conspiracy theories can really mess with your head and how being some sort of neat, um, I think it's called neat, neat, like a neat, um, self, like self, like a, like a hermit. How being a hermit can really affect you, but it's also got a very nice conclusion, I feel. Uh, I would have put it in A tier before, but I am going to put it in middle B. It's a very nice show to watch, and it's also very funny as well. Uh, the second barrage of Black Lagoon, uh, which I didn't think I actually put on here, which is very funny, uh, is definitely better than the uh, is definitely better than the first season. I feel there's a lot more character development between Rock and Revy as well as the other characters. I just feel the whole Russian mafia gets a very nice closure into how visceral they can be. But there's still something putting it off for me to put it any higher than B. Uh, Spice and Wolf. I believe I also have season two of Spice and Wolf here as well, one and two, which are both going in A. They are a fantastic. Uh, it is above Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. They are a fantastic sit down slice of life where you will even learn a little bit about economics. You'll learn a little bit about business, and you'll just see these two characters grow together and form a perfect bond as a relationship. And it's one of the most wholesome things that I've ever really watched. It's perfect. Now, what will be going in A? 
it's not this. Um, this is actually below, very much below, and these two Roberta's blood trials I felt was a little bit too visceral, a little bit too bloody. They were very much trying to highlight how Roberta is a very, very messed up character in the head. And I feel like they could have done this very much w better without the whole, like... I don't know, I just feel like it went too far. There's a specific scene where um, she's seducing this guy and then kills him, and then, like, he's just con constantly stabbing him over and over again. And it's like, you're going too far. You're going edgy for the sake of edgy. Just show that she's a messed up character without needing to push it over the edge so 14 year olds can watch it and be like, holy fucking shit. Cheese fucking wacky bananas bonkers. <laughs> um, the disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya is a top A. This film is fucking incredible. It is so good. The idea of like one of the main characters just suddenly disappearing and then our main, our main protagonist trying to deal with that and find them and bring them back is so perfect. The way how it wraps up at the end and ties a lot of loose ends together as well is fantastic. It is not S tier. There's still something putting it on if i rewatched it i'd probably put it in s tier but for now it's this top a it is an incredible film uh anna hannah where the flowers bloom i believe it's called uh, i'll put the actual title if i've uh, messed it up it's also going to be it's gonna be um yeah it'll be an a tier it'll be an a tier this film uh this anime broke me fucking killed me destroyed me so good there are a little bit there are a few things at like the beginning after certain stuff like a, like a scene which really really disturbed me and i thought well if this is the way the show's going i'm not gonna watch it but i'm glad i stuck out it's a great, great show about dealing with guilt and loss and grief and how everyone comes together at the end to finally say goodbye to someone that such had such a hold in their heart. Amazing show. Amazing show. Definitely a must watch if you really love drama and maybe even a tad bit of romance as well. Um, Jojo Part 3, Stardust Crusaders. This is going in B. This is top B now. This is our top B. Um, it, had, it dealt with a lot of pacing issues. I got very bored, but it was really picked up right at the end where they finally in egypt with dio fantastic final battle really cool characters joseph returning from part two is always a, just a blessing in disguise it's so good please watch the jojo series it's like my favorite anime series ever please for the love of god go watch it it's so good death parade is nay death parade is it caught me so off guard so so off guard this this like the fact that there isn't a season two or anything is is actually pitiful. I hate it. I hate that there's no there's no season two. This show dealing with the idea of like this bartender arbiter between life and death as you work through how people died and how their relationships shifted and what they will do to try and get this best idea of heaven or hell, even though it's kind of revealed it's revealed that there isn't that. It's either you get sent up or you just get sent into a void forever, and it's it's like messing with people's heads to try and get in and be like what are you really like and are you really like how you say you are and the ending is magnifique i love it and god oh my god flies by bradio so fucking good what an amazing opening neon genesis evangelion boys that's an ass that's an ass neon Ge that's above steins gate as well neon genesis evangelion is my 10 out of 10 it is literally my i know i said s near perfect whoever he was back then gonna shut the fuck up this is 10 out of 10. i really um like Evangelion a lot, uh, but I got the art book and, and the CD because the music is incredible, the sketches are so fun to look. This show dealing with the idea of guilt and feigning responsibility and taking choice, choose, you must choose, No, taking no responsibility is destroying people, it's destroying relationships, it's, it's, you have to choose something, it also deals with the, your whole mental health who, who are you are you who, who do you look up to why are you the way you are what's with your trauma how does it shape you as a person and obviously god the final episodes every you know congratulations congratulations that whole thing i loved that ending and if that show ended there like that i would have been a happy chappy that really that really didn't affect me that much hideki Arno, beauty of storytelling and he's even shown it in the rebuild films as well which i adore uh, it's an S tier. It's, a, it's an S tier show. Go watch it. Go get your mind melded and messed up. You will be depressed for weeks, but you'll be so happy you watch this absolute fucking masterpiece of a show. Real life. Now, I had to search up about real life. I had to search up to see what real life was. I completely forgot. And for that reason, I'm going to put it high C. It is it is a good like, little fun show of you can take this pill, you'll look younger again, you can relive your life. I remember really enjoying it and now I've tried to rewatch it a little bit and I just can't get back into it. it. I don't know if it's corny or cheesy or I really like the relationship that goes on between the two, like and then the main protagonist and then I suppose the heroine. 
of the, of, of, of the story, even though it's not like a shonen. It's fun. You won't hate it, but you won't remember it in like a year. If you just want to put something on to make you feel good for about a month, then that's real life. You can put that on. Uh, your name. Now, this is one I'm going to talk about a little bit more. Your name is below a silent voice for me. Now, don't get me wrong. Your name is impeccable. Your name is downright good. It is beautiful. Uh, is it... Um I want to say I'm Makoto Shinkai, but I don't think it's Makoto. Because now I'm just thinking Danganronpa. But the director of this, as well as weathering with you, just knows how to make these shots look gorgeous and beautiful and almost downright realistic. The story between these two characters, this like very romantic Freaky Friday, is so good. But a Silent Voice is so much more heartwarming and I believe it shows much, so much more character growth. It shows like the growth of this character and it's like wow he used to be an absolute dick and now look at him look at look how caring he's become look how empathetic he is whereas these two they're not exactly bad people it's just like this shows the relationship growing between these two people as well as the race against time against the comic whereas i prefer silent voice because it's more character driven if that makes sense i'm sure i'll probably get some dislikes for that i'm gonna get dislikes now for all of this because i can't really explain myself too well my hero academia is uh ah, bah, 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 bah. middle ground b middle ground b now don't get me wrong when these action scenes hit these action scenes hit they are breathtaking they are beautiful the whole tournament arc and then the ending between deku and todoroki fantastic the last two seasons though have been very lackluster for me in fact i haven't even watched season five or like i've watched half of season four and just stopped season one to three amazing united states of smash ending you know all for one against one for all so good so good but i suppose i'm also putting it here because of the fandom which sucks the fandom of my hero is oh God, it's not even elitist it's just weird it's just cringe i hate saying that word but it's just if you took cringe the word and stuck it in there that's what it is they are obnoxious they are overpowering they're trying to say characters are things when they're not and stuff like that and i don't know i don't know i can't put it any higher because of the fandom really the fandom destroys my liking of this show and i might not even pick it up again because of it maybe that's childish of me maybe i will grow as a person and think huh i should enjoy it on my own merit but for now i just can't watch it without thinking of like so many different fandoms and, and then the tiktoks and the oh man rascal does not dream of bunny senpai wow wow a tier what a loop this threw me for what an absolute loop starting this show i was just like oh it's just gonna be some like weird etchy show isn't it but oh my god i was crying i was i was laughing i was this show is romance incarnate but not even that it's so character driven there are amazing characters our protagonist's little sister with with how with like the damage to her body and how it works and her being able to grow as well as some of the side characters which come in and then it all resolves around this this like these two characters like the main heroine and the main protagonist their relationship together and the whole the whole thing is so unbelievably weirdly comedic how good it is because you look at it and it's like why well, this girl's been she's dressed in a bunny suit it, this isn't going to be anything butch etchy like i can't see this going any other way but it, it, it just isn't and oh my god the main protagonist is like one of the most just like guy main protagonist i don't know I've, I've i've ever seen he's so funny he's comedic he's strangely perverted and it all just makes it together for like amazing character growth amazing characters but yeah god rascal does not dream of when senpai is so good it's so good please do yourself a favor and watch it it's amazing Vinland Saga, third S. Vinland Saga is our third S. I will never forget the feeling I watched after watching Vinland Saga and realizing it was just the fucking prologue. I was like, what? Askeladd? Askeladd is such an amazing, captivating villain. When it switches like halfway through the season and you just see that like like he's Welsh and like he hates the fucking Danish so much and you find out why he's doing all the things he's doing and the main protagonist like spoilers please uh, this will be a little bit of a spoiler talk i'm sorry but i just can't help it and the main character wants to kill him but then when he dies at the end and like the main character's grabbing him like you bastard it was me i was meant to kill you and the Ascal is just talking about all this and then he fucking dies it is just like oh such a strange gut punch 
much, but then feeling of what the fuck was that? That was amazing. This is like, this is masterpiece in the making still. I can't wait for season two. I've heard it's going to slow down a bit. I believe there's some sort of farmland arc that happens and it's going to slow down a little bit. That is completely fine by me. I am not bothered by that in the goddamn slightest because whatever the show has to bring, I know it's going to be amazing. It's going to be at least like a nine and I just can't wait for more. It's so good. Jojo part five. Jojo part five is my favorite Jojo part and it goes uh, just above Rascal, just above Rascal, I think. Jojo part five does a lot for me that part three didn't. And I feel like even, don't get me wrong, part five has some pacing issues still, but part five's characters are what drive it, you know, Br Bruchati, Bruchati, Bruno, yeah, Bruno Bruchati, right? I'm saying, I'm probably saying it wrong, but you know who I mean, Zipper Man, Zipper Boy, and, and Giorno and Mr. And Nanancia, uh, Nalasia, Nalasia, God, I actually suck, don't I? Like. All of these characters come together to make this amazing thing. And and, and their quest, like Juno's like a noble quest to be like, I want to become like the top dog just so I can stop all of this awful shit happening in the streets. I fucking hate it. I want to become top god top dog to stop that. And then he gets his stand. Oh my god. King Crimson is a meme. I love it. There is nothing about this. There is nothing about this that I don't enjoy. Like there is nothing about this that I don't enjoy. It's so 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 good uh it's not s and it's not even high a it's like low a because there's still some issues the pacing issues some characters and everything like that but it's an a it's still fantastic fully coolie is a strange one fully coolie is gonna be like a like a low b it's like gonna be low b top top c i remember really liking fully coolie and it's obviously given one of, given us like one of the best ending credit songs ever right on shooting star by the pillows fucking phenomenal but I don't remember much from it. <laughs> and the things I do remember, I'm just like, fucking right, what? So there's like a giant iron, a giant golden iron in the middle. And then like, he gets hit with a guitar and then a thing comes out of his head. And what the fuck? That like, that's how I feel. And even rewatching it, I was still so confused. Do I think it's bad? No, I actually think it's enjoyable. For the most part where I can comprehend the show, I enjoy it. But I think it struggles from the idea, from, from being a little bit confusing. But I still think it's enjoyable nonetheless. Uh, Tengen Top and Gura Lagan is going to be top A, above um, Full Metal, but below Disappearance. Uh, Tengen Top is a beautiful, and it's one of the best animated trigger shows. It is the best animated trigger show, in my opinion. It's beautiful. The story is amazing. It threw me through a loop thinking that one character was going to be the protagonist when it was actually the other one. And it all culminates in this massive build up at the end where it's. It goes from just like random robot battles on the earth to multi-dimensional universe cracking events that like blow your mind and the characters are amazing no one's left out everyone's given a story and it comes to a close and even the close of this show got wrenching but in a good way in a good good way and anyone who hasn't watched this show i feel like anyone who's watching this video has watched the show but if you haven't do yourself a favor watch this show Phenomenal. So good. Recent. Very, very recent, but still, 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 still. Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, thrice upon a time, is S tier. It is S tier. And I believe, from how I feel, it will be the only S tier rebuild film on here. What a conclusion. What a conclusion from, from a very strange set of rebuilt films. What a way to end it. Beautiful, amazing new character tie-ups that were different from Neon Genesis Evangelion, but I feel even did better than what Neon Genesis Evangelion, the original show, could do. I think it was fantastic. I think it was... It's strange. It wasn't depressing. There were some depressing parts. Don't get me wrong. But this is a lot more joyous. It's a lot more... I see people explain that end of Evangelion is like the bad ending, but Rise Upon a Time is like the good ending. There's a lot of mind breaking, a lot of what the fuck fourth wall kind of shit that makes you go, whoa, holy fuck, what? And then the ending, the amazing ending song, One Last Kiss. This film is it's just not even short of phenomenal. This film is phenomenal. 
And if you like Evangelion and you haven't watched the rebuilds yet, watch the rebuilds specifically for this conclusion, because it is so good and wraps up the franchise with the most amazing, nice green and purple bow you'll ever find. The girl who leapt through time. The girl who leapt through time, I'm going to put... God, we're getting a lot of A's, but I just can't help it. It's going to go in A and it's going to go just below death parade it's gonna go just below death parade the girl who left through time i think is an amazing story an amazing romance story it does time travel very well and it's just it in a very strange concept which i enjoyed makoto like the the main protagonist here has some amazing scenes the scene where it's just makoto running there is no music there is nothing there is just her breath as she's running is one of the most harrowing scenes and i don't know why it just really got to me it's beautiful, it's amazing, time travel's done well, it's got a great conclusion, it's funny, it's everything you'd need in like a, it's a romantic time travel film, it's perfect, just, well, it's near perfect. There's a couple pacing issues and some character things that I didn't really enjoy, um, but please do yourself a favour and watch it, it's amazing. Uh, looks like I've put this on here twice, but I'm going to be using this one for um, 1 1.0 and this one for 2.0. So 1.0, 1.0 for me is a high B, and then 2.0 is a low A. Uh, 1.0 is like the first six episodes of the original Ava series, and like just kind of like reanimated, new coat of paint, very good. Uh, holds off on a few things. Asuka isn't and Asuka isn't like fully revealed until 2.0. Um, which is kind of like why I like 2.0 more. There's a lot more character in 2.0 because finally um, Asuka gets announced. Asuka gets shown and then finally you get the, like, the back and forth between Asuka and Shinji, which I really enjoy. Uh, it shows a lot. 1.0 shows a lot about Shinji's character and, and how he perceives Gendo, how he perceives Rei. It's kind of like the building blocks of how we're starting to see these characters. 2.0, it's building up more. He's building up more relationships. The way 2.0 ends with just the final sentence of it's the end of the world and it just ends is like i was like whoa i was like whoa it was so good uh but that's my feeling on the first two 3.0 is a little bit weak uh which is like why it's in like middle b and then the ending is an s it's fantastic Toradora is like <sighs> Toradora is like here like here i'd say uh no, no, I'll put it there. But the romantic parts are enjoyable. I don't like, I don't know. I don't like the character design. It's very, um, as you can tell, he looks 20 and she looks 11. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't like when shows do that. It's like a weird bait that I don't enjoy. I put it lower. I, in fact, I am. I'm going to put it like middle, like middle C. Where it's, the romance between the two of them was good. And it was so good to see the relationships between the different characters. The different characters were hilarious. But I just can't get over this. I can't. I'm a very, very strict on that matter. I just, um, not very strict. I just don't like it. So that's my opinion on that. I don't even see it on the same level as these shows. I just can't put it any higher from my own moral code, I suppose. Um, Steins Gate uh, Deja Vu, the film. I forget the name of the, the, the full title. I'll just call it Steins Gate Deja Vu is like... It's not bottom B, it's like here. I like what they did with Kurosu and Okabe in this, I really did. But the fact that it's not really canon, and also that they kind of destroyed the canon as well, in ruining a ton of things that were said were that were said impossible in, in the show, they made possible for a film. I don't like. I like how it very much focuses on Kurosu though. I like how it's like Kurosu's Steins Gate, where it's like it's Kurosu's moment. Whereas Steins Gate, the show is Okabe. The, the, the film is Kurosu's like search for okabe who is like flickering in and out of reality where it's like what that was never fucking mentioned in the show you kind of have to hold your disbelief you have to hold your disbelief from what you've watched previous to watch this and if you do that you'll enjoy it but mm, apart from that it's it's, it's like meh. hioka hioka's a hioka's a beautiful show beautiful romance not not even romance but like a blossoming romance between two characters amazing the main characters like blossoming blossoming into like this amazing kind of detective character and he starts to gain more of a personality is good i was scared that he was going to be a very flat character but he ends up being very attached to uh, one of the characters uh of course the comedic relief 
fantastic great comedic relief character overall it's just an amazing show you should um should watch even read the book if you have the chance because I, I know it's a book and it's good apparently i've not i've not read it but now a lot of people hate on phantom blood but i can't put it anywhere apart from middle b phantom blood is good i like how phantom blood sets up for the rest of the series um is it a bit boring and does suffers a bit from pacing issues yes but i love the use of Hamon. i like the introduction of dio i like dio as a vampire and so I, I like his entire villain arc i also like i also like um Zeffley, the original Zeffley. is amazing the characters are great they suffer a little bit but now i might just put it in the lower half of B. the characters suffer a little bit there's a few pacing issues more than the other jojo parts in my eyes but overall i just think it's still very enjoyable part one is probably maybe not the great, greatest part but in jojo terms that doesn't even mean it's bad it's pretty good your lion april um wow i didn't pick it up what happened there whoopsie your lion april is ass um that might actually be surprising for some people but um your lion april is s for me just because it is the only romance show where i thought about it for months afterwards i could not get my mind off this show i started listening to classical piano music to the show the characters amazing the, the tenseness the the whole feeling inside of what do i want to amount to am i just this piano player do i want to force myself down this for some people and then for the main character it's like i am so scared of playing piano can i play piano again properly and this this the, the main heroine the main girl protagonist coming in revitalizing and giving him a sense of purpose again only to spoilers please spoilers right now only to die at the end of the show and leave this massive gut punch but also bittersweet feeling of like you've helped me so much thank you and even if you're gone i'll still be a different person a better person because of what you've helped me with so thank you it's such an amazing show that deals so well with grief and loss and trauma and it just swells into this massive crescendo of just amazing amazing drama magnifique magna fucking feek so good one punch man is a tier i think um i'm gonna put it above part five of jojo uh, this is One Punch Man Season 1. I have not seen Season 2, and I do refuse to. I'm sorry. I just don't want to put myself through that traumatic idea of it not being good at all. But One Punch Man is one of the best animated shows I've ever seen. Oh my god, the whole dream sequence when he's fighting those mole people. Amazing. The final battle, the final battle on the ship, he gets punched to the fucking moon and he just jumps back. It's... it's it's every guy when every per if anyone who played with toys when they were little action toys or any toys this is what i would imagine i was going like oh, wow, bah, bah, bah. that's what i'm imagining this is what i'm imagining in my head and that show and then that in my head just became a show and it's this show it's amazing it's funny it's comedic it's action-packed it's full of flavor and for a show about a guy who can kill everything in one punch it never gets boring it's always something to keep you on your toes and i like Re-Zero, I've only watched season one, but season one is an A and it's a high A at that. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, isekai, everyone knows Isekai because it's fucking everywhere. Uh, I, I, I crossed this off as like another Isekai, just another basic Isekai, I never watched it until I started hearing people praising it and I started seeing it everywhere. All the characters like Rem and Ram and Amelia and Subaru, I, I, I started seeing them everywhere, I was like, I'll watch it. And holy fucking shit, it is brutal, it is unforgiving, it is heart-wrenching and it it is it's harrowing it's it's fucking harrowing the fucking the the, the sound that plays subaru can't tell people that he can fake that he can feign death that he can come back because then this harrowing fucking sound effect plays of just this thing like and it's the it's fucking terrifying i had to stop watching the show one night and i couldn't sleep because i had that sound stuck in my head it's harrowing it's like it's a thriller it's almost horror like sometimes and i've heard season two is just as good and i can't wait to watch it please do yourself a favor and watch this it's not like any other isekai and you'll enjoy the hell out of it jojo part four jojo part four um hmm i'm gonna put low a i'm gonna put mm, no high b jojo part four is high b uh part four is a lot of people's favorites and i understand it but i cannot put it higher than that because of the pacing pacing in part four is by far the fucking worst in all of the jojo's parts even part three the pacing in part four, it's like a slice of life 
and it's not what I expected. And going into it, I tried to give it benefit of the doubt, and I was just bored off my ass. I stopped watching it for about five months before picking it back up. And even then, I had to start from the beginning. Bringing Jotaro back was amazing. I loved that. Even the new Jojo Josuke is really good. Um, the stand user for the hand is a great comedic relief, and I think they go really well. Kikichi, an amazing character who finally gets his stand with Echoes which I think is hilarious. But I'd be remiss to not talk about the villain either, you know, Yosh Yoshikake Kira, Kira Yoshikake, I think. God, I, I just butcher last names when it comes to Japanese, don't I? Um, Kira, the best villain in all of JoJo. Better than Dio. Better than Dio, better than part six's villain. I forgot, but he has made in, made in heaven. And uh, that, but just but he is the best JoJo villain. He's so well written and he has no purpose. That's the thing. There is there is no purpose. Dio wants to take over the world. Kira is just a full-blown psychopath. And that's what makes his character so harrowing. He doesn't want to take over the world. He doesn't want to do anything. He just wants to live a normal life according to what's in his head. And it's terrifying. And that final scene with him as he um, goes into the beyond, as he uh, passes away, and shoots back. So good, but I just can't put it any higher. The pacing issues was very strange. The way they brought back Joseph, I guess I didn't really enjoy either. I feel like Joseph had had enough, and I feel even in the manga, I feel like they shouldn't have brought Joseph back. They should have just left it. What can you do? It was a, it was an integral part of the story as well because it's literally how Josuke was made. If you were, if you were catching my drift, but an amazing show nonetheless. Fantastic. Um, love is hard for an otaku. Um, very good. I'm gonna put it uh low B. No, I can't. You may be surprised by this. It's an A. I liked it too much. I liked it too much. It was so good. The comedy was amazing. I related to it so much in a big, deep level. It was just an amazing, an amazing show about two otakus trying to find love. Trying to first of all, one of them hiding it, and the other one just being open about it was amazing they have an amazing side plot character like relationship as well which develops amazingly too overall it's just fantastic it's just a great little slice of life romance where i don't know if there's another season i believe it is on amazon prime so i'll definitely be looking later but magnifique so good i am gonna have to move some of these down which is a bit depressing now that i think about it but um we'll worry about that when we get to the end uh, i want to eat your pancreas definitely is one of the best films one of the best romance films i've ever watched uh, it's very high a i'm very close to putting it in s but i don't really want to push that um gut wrenching right at the end where the main character sat and is like can i have permission to cry right at the end is i broke i cried too right at the end of that the way their relationship blossoms where you know this character is going to die you know they're going to die but you still hold on hold on to the idea that they're not going to when it happens it still catches you off guard and it just destroys you absolutely amazing romance film absolutely amazing romance series coming up uh kaguya sama love is war amazing i'm gonna put that in high b uh because i've only watched the first season uh amazing characters uh the chica dance obviously at the end is what everyone like remembers from this ending amazing comedy the dub is surprisingly funny and surprisingly good I've watched both sub and dub for this series because I rewatched it in the dub after hearing about it. Absolutely hilarious. This show and the mental gymnastics these people go through is absolutely insane to watch and it just makes it so much more fun. Now the reason it isn't an A is it would be an A if I had watched season 2, which I haven't watched yet because there's still something I want to get from it and I'm going to get it from season 2, so I'm going to make sure I watch it when I can. Why is my nose so unbelievably itchy? Demon Slayer. I have to rank it here because I don't remember many episodes in Demon Slayer apart from episode 19. Everyone knows what episode 19 is. The amazing, beautiful animation in that episode is phenomenal. Phenomenal. But I don't remember much else. I still think it's an amazing shonen. I don't think it's as good as Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, but I still think it's phenomenal nonetheless. I might even move it up to A if I get the chance. But look at how packed A is. I'm really going to try and balance things out. But speaking of this this is f i have to put it in f i just season two messed up that bad i was thinking about it for a while i was thinking am i gonna do it season one is a b season two is like below f so it just matters out for me death note see here's the thing death note's an a i've got so many a's i'm gonna have to change death note's a weird one because i really don't like what they did i don't like that they killed off l i i, I don't like who came in to replace him i like how it ended really love how it ended 
But when it comes to L and everything, I feel like, I don't know, maybe it was fumbled a little bit. Because I like, loved L as a character so much. Kira as a character, wacky, wacky banana crazy going monkey mode, is absolutely insane. I love him. What else can I say? It's Death Note. Everyone knows Death Note, don't they? So at least there's a C. God. 52 episodes of absolute fucking filler, and then the ending was fumbled right at the end. It's just better than Danganronpa. It's just better than Danganronpa. Starting the show, I was so excited. The beginning episode, when it's introducing everything, amazing. I was so excited for it. And then, I don't know, it just fumbled. And then halfway through, I just lost interest. Uh, I think Death the Kid was probably, like, my favorite character from it. It was my favorite show for a while because I was, like, in year eight of high school. And I was like, I love that. I love, I love. So, I'm Death the Kid. I've got cool guns and I shoot them like this because I'm epic. <laughs> And now it just seems to really overly edgy for me. I just don't know. Your love story, I think this is called. Our, our love story. I, I, I please, I'm going to put the title up if I got that wrong. But this is like a B. This is like just here. Sweet, kind, caring. The amazing gif of the uh, the heroine running away and then falling over and getting back up is amazing. and makes me laugh every single time. Uh, an amazing protagonist who is just loving and caring. And it's just it's just sweet and simple. Uh, Snow White with the red hair, um, I'm gonna put in C just because I don't remember much, didn't captivate me that much, I thought it got really, I thought it easily really went from A to B very quickly without much growth in character or anything, and uh, that's that from me, as well as C, Erased, but it's gonna be top C, because until that ending, Erased was phenomenal, up until the ending, the show was amazing, oh, oh, like another, another show, another show. Right, let's get through this. Danganronpa, this is going to be um, both the... Oh, wow, I really thought I put this together and I didn't. This is going to be the future. The um... Oh, that means I can move this down to D. Awesome. So this is going to go where this was, how I explained it before, where I just, I liked how they wrapped everything up kind of thing. Um, I don't remember the name of this one. It's like Suki Go, Suki Kago, Suki something like that. I'm going to put it like here. Because I remember the ending, and I loved the ending, and I loved in the credits of the final episode, it showed that like the two characters growing up and having a child together, it was it was amazing. But I f don't remember much. Uh, it was sweet, I suppose. It was like middle school. It was like middle school. Um, middle school love. It's like middle school romance, high school romance, and it was just simple. It was nice. Uh, Violet Evergarden's top A. It's gonna be about no. Nah, in fact, yeah, it's gonna be like here. It's gonna be like top four. Violet Evergarden is phenomenal. It looks amazing. It is gut wrenching. The character development of Violet herself is fantastic. And who knew that a whole anime around writing letters could be so phenomenally engaging? It was amazing. I can't wait to watch the film. I don't know if another series series is coming out, but I really hope it does. Darling and the Franks is a D. I'm sorry, but up until you know what episode? Up until. This show really had promise, and if it end, if it ended the way I was thinking, it would have been uh, it would have been like probably the weakest trigger, like the weakest trigger show. But it would have been B at least. But trigger really really fumbled here, and I just don't understand how. Um, recovery of an MMO junkie is like D. I just hate this. I'm pretty sure there's something weird about the author. I don't remember. I think he's not a nice guy. But even now, they're like this show was just boring, and even when I finished it, I was like ugh. Think about it. Mirai Niki is going to go above this show. Think about that. Mirai Niki is going to go middle C. Edgy for the sake of edginess, but damn if I didn't enjoy it. Damn if I didn't enjoy it. Still that online's D. It's hated. It's hated for a reason, and it is hated for a good reason at that. But is it F? No. It's not F. It's not bad, bad. It's just mediocre. It's just uh God, I can't wait to fucking talk about this. I can't wait to talk about this. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it's gonna go there, it's gonna go there. Neon, Neon's like my favorite, but God, close, close first place is Mob Psycho 100. Fuck me, bro. This show, the animation, amazing. The characters, fantastic. Reagan, one of the best comedic characters of all time. Mob is one of the best protagonists of all time. It's so strange how you can take such a quiet character and fill it with so much... Fill it with so much that you're enthralled by this character who doesn't really talk much at all. The whole part in the club, like the fitness club, and all these guys like cheering them on and everything, and they all go for runs and they all help him out, and they're being like amazing dicks to him. The parts where he goes like above 100% in season one and two, the animation for those parts is like 10 minutes of just fantastic animation the, uh, this show i will never reagan's character growth in season two as well fucking phenomenal there is nothing this show does wrong 
it is just fantastic. I just like Neon Genesis Evangelion better. That is literally the only reason why it's not number one. In fact, I'm going to say these are tied for first place for me. These, amazing. Amazing. So good. Attack on Titan is high A. It's not S. It's not S. Why is it not S? Season 2. Season 2 focused a lot more on politics. And even though I enjoyed it, I can still see pacing issues season 2 had up until season 3. So, season 1, 3, and 4, beautiful. Season 2, good, like an 8 out of 10, but still, it's not like... If all seasons were like season 3, which I believe 1, 3, and 4 are S tier, amazing. But I feel season 2, really, it just fumbles it for me a little bit. Um, obviously, amazing characters, Hanjay, Levi, you know, Eren himself, Mikasa Armin, you know, you know them all, you know they're all the stuff. Every side character never feels like a side character. Every character is a main character. Everyone feels like they're included. No one feels decluded. No one feels like they haven't had any growth. It's amazing. Cowboy Bebop's an S tier for me. Cowboy Bebop goes above your, your, your line, April. Um, one of the first 90s anime I ever watched, and I believe it might be the only 90s anime on here. But, um, fantastic. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Beautiful. Magnifique. Could just god almighty if netflix fuck up the live action it's gonna ruin it for me <laughs> i love ein i just i love i love spike i love everyone and i think the final episode is just oh god my heart man it was so good so so good gamers finally one hour into recording this this video will not be an hour long i promise one hour into recording this here we are the final pick. The end of Evangelion gets an S. But it's a low S. Because I like the way it ended, but I was expecting something else. It was still a gut punch, like, holy shit. I will not be the same after this ending, and I'm not the same after this ending. This ending was, like, amazing. It was, like, 10 out of 10, amazing. But I prefer Thrice Upon a Time's ending more. Because I like good endings. I like happy endings. What can I say? Everyone loves happy endings. But Neon Genesis Evangelion, the end of Evangelion, is a good cap-off point for the series before the rebuild shows began. You can tell where you can tell where Anna was in his place. When he made this, and as well as the ending of this, and where he was when he did the rebuilds. A lot of you know, he was very depressed at the time making the end of Evangelion and Neon Genesis the series. But when he was making the rebuild, he came back with a clearer mind. There was still a very big mental part in there. There's definitely a, a big emphasis on mental health in this show. But it ended so much more better. God, I know I'm supposed to be talking about this, but Gendo's character actually got something in this. Gendo's character was just like... When I watched this, when I watched Neon Genesis and the end of Evangelion, Gendo's character was just, it's Gendo, it's Gendo's character. He wants to get his wife back. That's why he's doing all this fucked up shit. But with this, there's so much more. It talked literally about his backstory. It talked about him growing up, how similar he was to Shinji and meeting his wife and everything. It's so much better. So much better. And that's it. Every la ladies and gentlemen, I say that's it, but I'm just going to take some time to sort some things out and we will be right back with the final tier list. And welcome back. Here we are. Here it is. The final tier list. So let's go from the top. S, we have got my favorite show, my favorite anime of all time, Neon Genesis Evangelion, followed by Mob Psycho, Steins Gate, Vinland, Thrice Upon a Time, Cowboy Bebop, End of Evangelion, and July in April. Hey, <laughs> we've got Attack on Titan, I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, Disappearance of Harry, Hisuzu, Mia, Tengen, Top and Gorilla Gan, Violet Evergarden, Free Zero, Hyoko, all the way to, I believe, 2.0, which I've put here. Now, what have I moved from A to B? I'll show you. I have moved um, The Girl Who Left Through Time, as well as Kill the Kill, as I feel that um, they are amazing shows, but uh, I just wanted to move some space, and as I thought, what was actually in A, these here don't really deserve to be in that spot. Uh, and then we go through from part four all the way down to here. Welcome to the HK. In C, what we put in C, um, we have port. What did we move to C? Uh, I believe we moved the Steinsgate film, yes, as well as Roberta's Blood Trials, I believe. Let me move down here too. 
And then we go to D. I'm going to move one from D to F. And it's going to be um, MMO Junkie. Just because I don't remember it. I think the guy who made it is an absolute prick. Um, if he isn't, I'm very sorry. But um, in D, we've got Danganronpa, which is last. Definitely. <laughs> He's still sorting it. Uh, uh, Darling in the Franks, Sword Art Online, and Danganronpa the Animation. And then in F, we have The Promised Neverland and MMO Junkie. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. I've been the Lord of Me, and this is my anime tier list. This is all the anime I've watched. I believe I've missed a few. If I have done, I will exclaim on Twitter the ones I have missed. I have missed one, and if I was going to say, uh, I might just pop a little image. Uh, Castlevania uh, will go between Vinland Saga and Thrice Upon a Time. An amazing fucking show. If you haven't seen it, go on Netflix and watch it. Season 1 to 4. Real ride. Absolutely amazing. But this is it. This is my anime tier list. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this content, please comment below if you want me to do anything else anime related. I could do a manga one. I haven't read much manga, but I can do one. Uh, I want to make more videos about anime specifically. If there is an anime on this tier list that you've seen and you want me to do a video on, please tell me. I would love to do it. And apart from that, thank you very much everyone for watching. I've been the Lord of Meat. You guys have been incredible. Uh, like and subscribe and then just, you know, comment for fun because everyone loves doing that um thank you all so much i've been the lord of me and i hope you have a good one ciao